Hey guys, in this video I want to show you how to make a cool bouncy pulse synth like you hear in a lot of electronic music. So let's take a listen to a quick dance track that I'm working on right now. See if you can point out the big mistake. Pretty clearly the issue is that the synthesizer here is just kind of boring and stale. It's not bouncy or anything. You're not able to dance to it. So in this video, I'm going to show you two ways that you can make this boring straight synth lead into a nice bouncy lead that you can really dance to. The first method, which will take up the majority of this video, is an age-old tactic called side chaining. And the idea of that is that we send the audio from one track towards another track. So when the audio on the first track plays, the audio on the second track ducks out of the way for it. In this case, we have a send track, which is our kick, sending audio to a receive track, which is our lead synthesizer. So anytime that the kick happens to play, the synthesizer will duck out of the way for it, which will give us that cool bouncy feel that we're looking for. So to do that, the first thing you're really going to want to do is to make a duplicate track of kick and name it to ghost kick. You'll understand in a few minutes why this is so important, but for right now, just take my word for it, make a duplicate track and mute the original one. We're going to be setting up ghost kick to work with lead synth. So Go into I.O. of Ghost Kick and make a new send to the track that you want to be bouncy. In this case, my lead synth folder track. Another way to do this is if you hold I.O. and simply drag it to your receive track, that will do the exact same thing. So with that done, let's play the track and see what happened. You probably noticed that the kick is extremely loud now, and that is not an accident. The reason that that's happening is we're not just hearing the original kick sound anymore, we're also hearing the reflection of it, I guess you could say, that's being sent over to this track. You noticed I just soloed this track, but it kept the other one active, because when I play, it'll be playing them both at the same time. So to get around this, click on I.O. and Ghost Kick again. We're going to be doing that a lot. And in Master Parent Send, right up here in the corner, that's hard to see because of the color scheme I'm working on for Reaper right now, uncheck this. What that's going to do is make sure that the audio coming from the track right here isn't going to affect anything on the master track. So it's still going to affect the lead synth track so we can side chain with it, but it's not going to affect the master track. So with that unchecked, if you will notice, the drums are back to normal now. So now we're ready to work on the actual synthesizer now to make it all bouncy. Go on to your receive track, in my case the lead synth, and open up Recomp. So, real quickly, in case that you happen not to know how this thing works, pay quick attention to the interface, especially the threshold thing right here while I play the song for just another second. Alright, so the green bars that are going up and down there represent the audio that's being sent into the compressor. If you move the threshold down and the ratio up a little, the compressor will cut off any audio that is sent in that goes over where the fader happens to be. It'll just cut it off. Okay, so with that said, if you were listening to the audio right there, the compressor right now is considering both our lead synthesizer 
and the kick audio that is being sent to it, since it's all coming out of the same track right now. What we want it to do is to only consider the audio that is being sent to it while it ignores the audio that was initially here. So, to show what I mean by that, click on 4 and 2 out right here, and it's going to show you a little diagram of what's going on right now. This will make a bit more sense in just a second. So notice that 1 and 2 is main input left and main input right. The, the same main input left and right that you see right here under the detector input. We'll get back to that in just one second. Right now, go to the ghost kick and click on I.O. You see 1, 2 going into 1, 2. Set it to 1, 2 going into 3, 4. 1 and 2 right here is the same as main input left plus right. So on the compressor under detector input, set this to auxiliary input left plus right, which is the same right now as 3 and 4 right here. Because if we head back into 4 and 2 out, you'll notice that 3 and 4 right now are checked so that it's auxiliary input left and auxiliary input right, the same way that we have it right there. So if the kick is being sent to 3 and 4, and auxiliary input left plus right is set right here to be the same thing as 3 and 4, we are now telling the compressor to only consider the kick drum as valuable information. And take a listen. Now the compressor is doing exactly what we want, and if we click on preview filter in the compressor, we will get to hear the audio that it's working with. The kick drum, which is exactly what we wanted. So, you may notice now that the ghost kick track is not audible, which is why, which is one of the reasons why it was so important to duplicate the original track, because now, to hear the drums, we unmute the original kick track, and everything is pretty much like how we want it now. Now from there, you can look up tutorials on how to work more with this. I don't want this video to be even longer than it, al than it already is. But you can customize this to your heart's desire to get this pulsing synth sound to be exactly how you want it. But wait, what if you want to have another sidechain set up? Well, that's simple. A post for 1 and 2 going to 3 and 4, set the next one up to go into 5 and 6. And in the other track, which I'm going to use this one again for sheer example, go into 4 and 2 out again. And instead of 3 and 4 being checked to be the same as aux, l, and aux, r, set that to 5 and 6. So, with the ghost kick being sent to 5 and 6, and the compressor being told to only think about the auxiliary input, which happens to be set to 5 and 6 right now, we will have a similar effect. and so on and so forth. So you're able to set up more than one sidechain compression thing that way. So I know that that was a lot of content. You can review this video if you feel you need to, but that was a detailed description of how to do sidechain compression in Reaper. And that is a very, very valuable thing to know, not only just for making that pulse synth sound that we all love so much, but it's an incredibly useful mixing tool in general for all genres of music that has been around for decades. So it is a very, very good thing to know how to do it. Anyway, with that said, I'm going to spend the remainder of the video talking about the other main way that people get that bouncy pulse synth sound today, and that is with volume automation. I will return in just a minute to continue talking about this, right after I get rid of all the hard work that we've done so we can start with that. Hey guys, I am back again to talk about the other way that people get that 
bouncy pulse synth sound today, and also in many cases to emulate side chaining with much more ease of use, and as I just said, that is volume automation. So within Reaper, the native way that you would do this is on the track that you want to be bouncy, again, my lead synth, click on this trim button right here, and then open up the volume envelope. And you make a bunch of points and you can automate it that way. This will take a second. All right, so now I'm going to copy that and paste it a bunch of times. And listen. It, it, it was that easy, opposed to having to set up this complicated side chain with a compressor and sends and receives like before, I just did that, and it works. However, there is a very major downside. This method of doing it is only really efficient for basic four to the floor kind of beats. This wouldn't this wouldn't work for more complicated drum beats like what you might hear from I don't know Koan sound. If you're making that kind of music, you pretty much have to do side chaining. But if you are working on a song with a more simple beat like this, or you're willing to just customize the automation that deeply, this will work. And if this isn't convenient enough for you, there's another way to do automation that is very popular on the forums anyway as of lately, and that is by using a volume automation virtual instrument, or I should say effect, a plugin. The most popular one right now is called LFO Tool. However, there are a few others. The one that I personally use is called Volume Shaper 4, and I'm going to put that on this track right now. So I'm going to set this up and just briefly show you what it does. Oops. So you're kind of able to set up your quick, simple, easily customizable mock-up sidechain compression thing with this by just sort of shaping these curves, and it's just that easy. And you're even able to change the uh, loop length. And I cannot tell you how incredibly useful this is. I, I use this plugin in almost every single track I've made since I bought it. And it wasn't free. I paid $40 for this one, but it was so, so worth the money. I highly recommend it. However, if you'd rather not spend money on a plugin, there is one really good free one that does something similar called Tell Filter 2. And it does basically the, the same thing. Uh, we'll set this to volume. I don't like the interface on this one as much, but it does get the job done and it is free, so I do highly recommend it, because why not have it? It's, it's free. So that's the other major way that people will get that bouncy pulse synth and dance music. If your song has a simple beat, I do recommend that this is the way that you do it. It's way easier, it's way quicker, it's way more convenient, and ultimately it's way more customizable, at least unless you're willing to spend hours tweaking your ghost kick sample or whatever. But if your song is any more complicated than that, that's where tools like this will start to fail, and you're going to have to rely on the age-old method of sidechain compression, which can be very, very customizable if you're willing to spend a long time with it. You can test out different sounds and samples um, instead of just a kick drum. You can get way more creative than just a kick drum if you, if you want to. 
But a tool like this is what I usually use because most of my songs so far are more simple beaded like this. <laughs> Alright, so I really hope that you found this useful, and thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day.